What's up guys? We're finally back on Eerie's and Eerie Adventures and today we're in my garage. Beautiful garage. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make a swim bait, this swim bait to be exact. Multi part swim bait. I'm going to be showing you how to make this out of wood. Here I'll give you a little close up. Beautiful. It's called the Goon Shad. Well that's what I call it. But that's what we're going to be making today. Uh, it takes, you need a little bit of prior tool uh, buying, I guess. You probably can do this with basic tools, I guess, but I'm going to be using some other tools that will be make it a little bit faster so I can make this in the video. But my guess is you could probably do this with um, basic tools. So, wooden swim bait, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you're making this lure is you're going to want to make a rough sketch of what you're going to, like, cut out. So, as reference, I'm going to use my lure that I've already made. And these lines are just to show, because I this is old recycled wood, so there's like nail stubs on both sides. So these lines are just to show where I'm cutting, so you don't really have to do that if you're using new wood. But I'm just going to draw like a rough sketch of what the, the lure is going to be shaped. So let's do that. So that is a rough sketch of what we're going to cut out. That's, I'm going to follow, uh, there's two lines right here. That's just I messed up kind of. Instead of this first, the inner line, I'm going to follow the outer line. Because I want that kind of corner, like a sharp angle right here. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to cut this out. Um, we, I'm using a jigsaw. But you can probably use something else. But I'm just going to cut that out with the jigsaw. And I'll see you in a second. So through movie magic and the power of editing, we have our shape. Now there is, if you can see that, there is a little part right here that's not really good, but through sanding, uh, it should be gone. So next next step is um, sanding. So it's right now it's really squarish, and as if you can see about the other lure, this one's really rounded. So what we're going to do is you're going to give it a little rounded shape on all of these edges. And, but, um... When we when we finish this, I'm gonna be uh, eventually in the next couple steps. I'm gonna be using a sandpaper to sand it down and make it look better. But for now, we're just giving it the rough, rounded edges or the rough edges to be rounded. And a crucial thing when you're actually making this is so these kind of lures, they have a weight on the bottom because they don't they don't like uh, float. Because if they float, they wouldn't really work. They don't really sink either. They well, they do float, but they kind of like float near the surface. So their back sits out, sticks out of the water while the bottom sinks. Okay, so it's like a little bit submerged underwater, a little bit out. So when you pull it, it like wiggles around, and it kind of looks like a dying bait fish, like floated towards the top. So what you need to do when you sand this is you got to make sure. So you're gonna make sure like it's rounded downwards. So like a bobber, like an inline bobber, kind of has the two sides. They kind of go like this, like almost a triangle, but rounded at the top. You have to do that, or else it will not have the correct flotation it needs. Like it'll just float like si like on its side, and it does not look good like that. So you need to round it so these edges come like this, like the bottom edges. Imagine a triangle. The top is the, tri the the base of the triangle, and it goes like down like this. And the weights will be down here. So we're going to get to the sanding this in a second. And yeah, here we go.
I'm pretty sure I got it to what I want it to look like. So you can see it's really rounded. It's oh, it's pretty much rounded. What we'll do later is uh, we'll take sandpaper and completely just round it out because you can see there's some parts where it's just kind of like there's a little angle in it. So you just we're just gonna sand that down and eventually it'll just look completely like smooth and stuff. But as I was saying earlier, you can kind of tell on camera. I don't know if it'll do it justice, but see how the it's like angled this way. That's the bobber kind of metri or metaphor kind of. It needs to be like that so we can uh, float properly. But yeah, and the tail is also angled just because aesthetics, you know. Fish don't have bulky tails, they have thin ones, so you kind of got to thin the tail out. But yeah, it's I have it angled perfectly. So next what we're going to do is we're going to split it. And we might need a little more sanding after that because sometimes uh, cutting it gives it uh, some nicks and stuff. But we're going to split it. And what I'm going to probably use is a hacksaw, which is probably is mostly for metal, but it'll make a really precise cut down the middle, and it won't leave as much nick. So, so you can see this lure is cut. So this one's a little small, but this one is cut more towards the tail end. It gives more or less tail end than there is torso, because you want it to start sitting. So what I'm going to cut, I'm going to go probably about here. We're just going to cut that right off. And don't worry about the marker mark on it because either it will get sanded off or it will get painted over. So it won't really matter in the end. So a marking on it isn't going to screw anything up. But yeah, we're just going to cut that with a hacksaw. So, okay, I'm not going to put that in the video because I'm pretty sure people know how to use a hacksaw or a saw in general. So just a back and forth kind of saw. So we're going to do that and I'll show you it when it's done. As you can see, it's cut pretty smoothly yeah, it's upside down uh, pretty smoothly but I'm gonna give it a little sanding with the sander really quick and make sure it's just completely like straight okay so oh wait this is upside down yeah, but we're gonna make sure it's completely straight let's do that So now that it's straight, what we're going to have to do next is add weight to it on the bottom. So what I'm using for weight is one big split shot and two little ones. The two little ones will go in the back, the tail portion, and this one will go in the torso portion. And I don't really want to make a, a, like a hole in the bottom like this wide. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get to a hard surface and make it like a disc. I'm going to smash it with a hammer until it's like a disc so it's not as big to put in. Okay, so let's uh, do that and then I will drill the holes and put it in. So for the weights, I actually decided to go with two of the bigger ones for the front because they're not, I want like more weight because I don't think it's enough. This is probably enough altogether but the one of them probably wasn't going to be enough so I just start with two. But now we're going to use this drill press. You can probably just use a regular drill and a little drill, drill bit. But this drill bit is about big enough to fit this disc in. So, oops, I dropped it. We're going to take the front pat, patch, patch, front piece, and we're going to drill into it, probably about in the middle of the bottom. And we're going to drill into it and make a couple holes to make a, like a line where I can fit both these discs in. And yeah, here we go.
now that uh, the met the weights actually fit snug in the holes, I can actually move inside and start sanding and all that fun stuff. So I'm gonna clean this all up, and we're gonna move inside to where my other workspace is. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take super glue, and we're gonna add a little bit to each side of the weights in this so it stays in okay so if we can get this to work it will actually come out just add that glue just gives it a little extra like stick so it actually stays in but they're in pretty snug so Oops. yeah so you just add in glue to that you know let that dry and then once that dries I'm actually going to add this tacky glue. It's really just like regular Elmo's kind of glue. Just add it in, and it kind of just fills in the holes. So you don't have like a bunch of holes in there, and it kind of just evens the holes out. So I'm just going to add that. It takes a while to dry, so... Well, this stuff takes a while to dry. This stuff dries pretty fast, but this is just going to harden the holes, and uh, it'll make it even. So I'll get back to you when we're done drying this stupid glue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use these pre-drilled, or not drilled, but I just, what I did is I just screwed them in. Because you can, it's soft enough what you just screw in, but I just screwed them in so they're pre-done holes. And what we're going to do is you're going to take these things, um, they're called screw eye hooks. You can get them from Lowe's for about 79 cents to 80 cents, so 70 to 80 cents. They're really small, and what you're just going to do is you're going to screw them in, okay? Well, there's a certain way you have to orient them in order to do this good well. So, I'm going to use these pliers. Actually, you know what? I forgot to add a step in. What we're actually going to do before we do that is we're going to add more super glue to make sure they actually stay in. So, the two of them will go in the front portion if I can get the super glue to come out. There we go. So, you super glue that and you're just going to screw it in. So, just like you do any other kind of screw, like this. Just twist it in, and take pliers and make sure they're twisted tight. And the super glue should dry it in there. Make sure it's. And the way you have to orient this in order to make it work is it has to be. Th these two have to be. It to be like pointed this way. Sorry, my camera ran out. Um. So the second hooks I actually bent. You just use pliers. Just use pliers and like a hard material and you just bend them. But yeah, these, we're going to do the same kind of thing. You take glue. You take this glue and put a little bit on again. And then you're going to put it in here. And this one goes to the top, I believe. I'm getting sticky. His stuff sticks real bad. It goes to the top. If I can get it in. Just and then you're gonna just twist the top. If you can get it in, that is, because this is so freaking hard. Um yeah, so just twist this side. And this will actually twist it in. And now my fingers are getting stuck to the stuff. That's awesome. Okay. Okay, and then you gotta make sure that once you're done, it's the actual top. It's not like off the side. And it's oriented. This side is oriented to, so it's side to side and not up and down like the other side. That'll make it what it's supposed to do. And then I just I close this gap by bending it back. Kind of. So there's the first one. Kind of, you can already see it's taking shape to what it's supposed to look like. So then, with the second one, you actually can't like, you can't really screw it in because they're already bound. These ones are bound together, and you can't twist it like that anymore. So what you actually have to do is, uh, what I do is I take a hook and I just hollow it out. So instead of being able to just screw it in, it just pushes right in. See, just pushes right in. So the glue will hold it in, but so. Uh, take this, and at this time, I close this beforehand. So you just ply that shut, and you're gonna take your glue. 
and glue this. Get the glue. And then you just slide it right in and make sure it's the right orientation. There you go. And you're just going to let that dry. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to do the next step. And actually, you want to make sure these are even too. So you just kind of push them together and make sure they're even. So yeah, once they dry, it's going to look pretty nice. Now that the glue is dried, you can see that it works pretty well. So the next step in this lure is sanding it and the more it's because there's see these like rough like kind of rough edges like rough like patches you just got to sand those out and what I say is the more you sand the longer you sand the better it looks so just sand it a lot and it'll look better and you can get all this like markings off with it uh, I use some actually like fine grit I I barely use this uh like really hard grit but usually I'll just use the fine grit and I'll sand it for a very long time just make it look good and then the next and then we'll do the next step so sand it first and then we'll move on so as you can see I sanded it down a lot it just looks a lot smoother and ultimately better but now so with this lure the, the one I already made you can see that there's cut like a gill kind of plate and there's a little bit of lines where this uh, fin would be same with the other side and then there's also like lines on the the fin just to make it more look, look more realistic so what you're gonna do to actually like make that is use a knife to like carve it and then eventually you use a, a like a little tiny file kinda just to like widen out and make it look better on all of them so that's our next step I'm not gonna put it in the video because it takes a really long time and I just you, I, you get the gist of it pretty much so just make those lines and then we'll get to the next step but yeah the gill plate the fin and the uh, tail is all that's what you use the knife for okay so do that and then that's the next step so so I put the grooves in here's the gill plate groove looks pretty good on both sides and I decided not to do a fin because I feel like it looks better without the fin but the tail the tail I uh, put the grooves in too so that looks good too so that's all you gotta do and then next pretty much you're just gonna paint it and then put a coat of uh, protectant wood protectant on it so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna show you the finished product and show you what it looks like or what it well I'm gonna show you the paint uh, after I'm not gonna show you doing it but still gotta put the hooks in so that's not finished and then I'm gonna show you what it does in the water so I'm gonna show you that the weight actually distributes fine and it floats fine so I'll do that paint it and then we'll get to it so there we go so now that you've sanded it and painted it it looks pretty nice well mine does at least I don't know about you but mine looks pretty nice Who's icy I got shark I did like a chartreuse kind of paint job uh, it looks pretty good but so once you once you're done with the painting I you're supposed to pre-drill not pre-drill but like pre-screw in the little eye hook things you screw like pre pre-drill kind of I don't really right care uh, the front and two one on the tail and one on the torso okay and then you're gonna take your super glue and you're gonna you're gonna coat the first one with glue get it all globbed up just like just like this okay I'm not that bad just like that what's okay and then you're gonna, so what I did I, I pre did this too you have the screw eye hook a little o-ring which you can buy at Walmart and they're pretty cheap too and then a hook and you take the screw I'm just getting super glued to everything this stuff's so sticky it's clear so you can't even tell where it's going coat that and just put it right in make sure the o-ring doesn't get stick to, stuck to the glue because that would be bad you don't want that you don't want glue in the, the ring either like the screw the eye of the screw because that'll get it all mucked up and it's hard to like it won't give it a free reign of movement and you need that so you're, just, you're screwing this in, like I've said, probably a million more times than I need to. And then, what you're going to want to do when you're done with that, is you just want to let it dry, and you're going to make sure that the hooks 
are away from the. Let me put it this way so you can see it. They're not touching the body, so so just so that the paint dries perfectly. So you're just gonna leave it dry like that, probably about 10 minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes, and you should be fine. And then I'll be back in a second. So when you're done letting the hooks dry, this is what your finished product should look like. I'd say it looks pretty nice. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is today I actually went out to the golf course and. I tested this one. I'm going to show you what the action looks like. So, in a second, I'm going to show you the video I took on my new GoPro. I'll show you that right now. 